Momo? Yes. I'm Kat and I've got James here with me. G'day, Momo. How are you today? Very good, thank you. Yourself? I'm fine, thank you. And so you have got your new album, Pocket Full of Dreams, out. Yes, yes, yeah, we do. Um, yeah, it just got released the Friday, went by, but the Friday before that. And has it started off okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels great to have a second album drop and out there, you know, for the masses to hear. And you're the one who came here at the age of three, are you? Yeah, yeah. And what was it like growing up as an African in Australia? Well, it, 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 was, it was really difficult, you know, because, like, there was no other... At that time, there was, like, a really small demographic Africans living in, in Melbourne at that time, you know what I mean? So there wasn't really, like, a lot of people that I could relate to growing up until, like, as time passed on, especially, like, after, like, 2000, there was a lot more a lot more Africans that migrated yeah. into Australia, so then I could relate to more people. But, you know, but I, it, it's still, like, you know, I adapted, like, you know, like, I adapted to Australian culture, like, very easily. And even though I grew up here grew up here from a very young age, I still felt like an outcast because, you know, I go home and, you know, like, we, we eat and speak very differently and, you know, do things very differently to, to like, the people that I was going to school with. Well, I saw a video on YouTube where you were talking about how you would take rice and that to school when other kids were eating Vegemite sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. Did you actually eat Vegemite sandwiches ever? Growing up, no, it wasn't until I was actually, uh, like, when I when I was a young adult, moved out at home, and, you know, when, when I was busy and I learned that Vegemite sandwich actually gives a lot of energy and you know, sustainable energy in your body. <laughs> so you do like Vegemite? Yeah, 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 it's not bad. Well, then you are an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard to bring out your next album because there was a four-year gap between? Well, uh, hard. It wasn't. It wasn't really hard. There was nothing too hard about it, apart from the pressures that we we're putting on ourselves. Like we have a certain expectation that we have for ourselves. Like you know, like we we don't we don't want to do a half half ass job. So like the pressure, the pressure that we had more or less like came from ourselves. Like wanting the album to sound a certain kind of way once we got it going. And and the great thing about that was like you know we didn't like it, it wasn't like the pressure of having to create something that was that was unnatural because I think yeah, if there was pressure to create something that was that was forced it would have taken us even longer you know and like you know the four year gap in between was also it, it was like yeah it was a gap from releasing records but it was we were extremely busy like we were touring extensively with like you know with like big international artists and then also we you know we, we went overseas and toured to the Europe you know like play, playing like some big festivals and we were recording while we were in Europe as well so the whole period in between was just like a, a big creative process leading to this album well your music reminds me a little bit of the two-pack era what influences do you have ah uh, yeah i definitely i definitely listened to tupac growing up you know like in especially in high school because like that's when um you know all eyes on me was like uh that album all eyes on me was massive uh, you know it was one of the biggest selling hip-hop records if if not you know so like that whole phase of like you know like tupac Snoop dog and all that you know and, uh, and us young kids you know like who are a bit rebellious you know like really connected with um with with that with that record, but like that wasn't just the music that I grew up listening to. You know, I listened to from like okay, I'll give you an example from like Paul Simon to Tupac, which is a pretty broad, like you know, large spectrum if you think about it. You know, yeah. The video for running it, yeah. Did you go to Luna Park for that? Yes, yeah, yeah, we did. What we've done with you know with the people that were involved in that, we just organised like a day trip where we just ran around the city and all around different areas and just um, and just had a joyful day and just like you know shot it like just we more or less let them do what they do on the weekends kind of thing and just film that capture that really you know like it was very, it was a very organic organic process it wasn't uh, too it didn't have to be too planned like shots planned too much and all that it was just like okay cool well you know just go about doing doing your thing and then once they've done something that really caught our eye it was like okay actually you know like that was great what you've done well, let's capture it again kind of thing and, so it was very natural. Yeah, it looked like fun. And so you're touring for the release of your new single, Easy Come, Easy Go, and I assume the album as well. Yep. And you're going to be at the Northcote Social Club on the 19th and 20th of October. That's correct. Who have you got supporting you there? Is it just all day or have you got 
other people? No, we've, we've, got, we've got All Day who's going to be there, you know, really digging his music. And we've also got um, our homeboy, Emphy Jones, who um, also features on our re- record, you know, and featured on our last record as well. He's going to be there as well. You mentioned a bit earlier how you were t- doing support work for a few big names. It says here you, that they include Bruno Mars, Teeny Tempa, B.O.B. and Lupe Fiasco. I yep. was just wanting to ask what it was like to tour with them. Uh, you know, different t- different tours, different people, different vibes. You know, like oh, one of the most memorable for me would have to be Bruno Mars because, like, you know, you'd think that, oh, okay, cool, someone that big, you know, would be so under the pump just working that like he wouldn't really want to hang out he'd just be like oh any minute that he got free he'd just want to be chilling in his hotel room but no nah, he's so obviously like such good vibes like we were hanging out and he's like you know like sometimes you tour people and they kind of you do a whole national tour and you actually don't even get to meet them you know like but we were, it was great like at the end like the, he actually bought us a bottle of birth as like a gift to saying you know like thank you so much for doing the tour with us and I was just like shocked I was like man I should be buying you something <laughs> <laughs> You know, but he was like, he was a really down to earth, genuine. Like I thought, I was just hanging around with one of my boys. You know, like it was really cool. Well, you mentioned you toured Europe and you did the Glastonbury Festival. What's mm. what do you think's the largest crowd you've played in front of? Well, definitely that we've played in front of. Uh, man, I'm lost for words. Like because that was just such a monster, monster festival. Like we've played a lot of festivals in Australia, but when you go to Glastonbury and you realise how big it is, it's a mammoth. A, it's just so huge, so many people. Like it, it'd take you a day to get across the whole, the whole festival, you know. Like, and it was, it was really, it was electric, you know. Like, you know, playing in front of people that had, like, you know, not like a lot of them had actually, never actually heard our music before, because we had a lot of people, like a lot of people, approach us afterwards saying, like, oh, what was the name of your band again? We've never heard of these where you from. Like, yeah, we live in, you know, like we live in Australia originally from Africa, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But it was just such a good vibe, and you know, like. And people really get into it. It's yeah, amazing. Well, the way you said that, do you consider yourself Australian, or do you still feel more African? I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely Australian. I live, I live in Australia. I like went to school here. I grew up here and everything. But you know, but at the same time, my my roots is definitely African. You know what I mean? Like, and and that's and that's very that's very important to me because you know, like that's my even even though I live in Australia and I embrace Australian culture and all that. I also very much embrace my own culture and, you know, and hope to preserve that because I think, I think me bringing my culture into Australia, like everybody else, that's what makes Australia, because Australia is such a mixed place, but, you know, and I think it's really important that we share each other's cultures, you know what I mean? So, like, I, it's very, it's very, very important to me that I still, that I live, that I live that, you know, like, I, I still speak my mother tongue very, very fluently, you know, like, you know, when I go see my parents, I speak in my mother tongue, you know, more than English, I speak, you know, because I speak like three languages when I'm at home with my family, you know, and that's a very important thing for me, you know, especially coming from like, I come from the Comoros Islands and here in Australia, there's actually in the whole of Australia, there's like five families in the whole of Australia that are from the Comoros Islands, you know, like we, people from where I'm from don't migrate here, so, you know, I, I want to preserve that, you know what I mean, like, it's a big thing, I don't want it to be like, get lost in generations to come. Have you been back there much? Yes, definitely. I I went back, my, the first time I went back, I was 15, and I went back last year. Yeah, both, uh, yeah, I went back uh, last year. I, me, me and Asmarino were in South Africa working. Uh, we were working with a, with a program where we took uh, about seven Australian young kids to South Africa so they could learn about how racism affects the country. And we spent four weeks in South Africa, went to like Nassau Mandela's office, went to Parliament House, talked to some politicians, went to some orphanages, went to some orphanages where like all the kids that were affected by AIDS in one way or another. Yeah, just, you know, met met some amazing people and, and a part of that was also just documenting our perspectives of it all and also just like, you know, talking to the young kids and just asking them, yeah, asking them how they feel about the whole situation. And, and then after that, I went back home. From, from South Africa, I took the opportunity and went back home. Yeah, and as Marino just came back from from home as well, he went there for, for the first time in like ten years. He hadn't been back in ten years, mm-hmm. and he just went there and he came back before our album was released. Do you guys still have day jobs? Yeah, well, my, myself, I'm a I'm a producer and a mentor. Like we both, both me and as Marino, a big part of what we do is, um, you know, we still really much engage with our community and youth, you know, because you know, like youth work. Like workshops is what more or less started off our what is now our career, 
And so for me, a big thing is like, you know, like using my skills that I've developed over the years and giving that back to the community. So like for the last six years, I've been working at the Melbourne Arts Centre, uh, uh, helping out, facilitating a program called Big Deep, where we work with young kids, teaching them how to program music, write music, arrange and perform. Oh, that'd be interesting. So you you don't want other young African children to feel the way you did, to feel so isolated? Definitely not. If, if, I, if I'm in a position where I can create something where they don't feel so isolated or like, you know, hopefully, you know, like not that, not that I write my music specifically so that they feel like they can relate to someone, but like just me sharing my personality and my stories and from what I've heard from people that, that, that they can... They can relate. It's a great thing. So, like you know, if they if they if they can definitely feel a bit more comfort in that, then that's that's a blessing. That's just an extra blessing, you know. Like it's beautiful, and you know, and it's also something that motivates me. And the name Diafrix, what what does that mean to you? Um, it's actually it's actually pronounced Diafrix, and what it is is it, it just means the African. It means African. Yeah, the African. Yeah. All right. Yes. It's- that in one of your native languages that you speak at home? No, <laughs> no. It was actually um, what it is. is um, that we used to, so we we hung out in, in Footscray, right? Uh, yep. That's where we used to rehearse, you know, go go catch up with our friends, have coffee, and all this kind of stuff. And there was a coffee shop actually called Dafrik, and we were thinking of a name of the group, and you know, like the Afrik, the uh, Afrik, and so yeah. So we just put the letters around, and we just made it ourselves so it's actually our own original kind of name and meaning you know what I mean like you know it's something that we've created oh, yeah. from the influence from from this coffee shop and what they're trying to say <laughs> well we'll have to start a campaign to get it in the dictionary yes <laughs> <laughs> so other than the Northcote Social Club on 19th and 20th of October you're also doing the Queen's Cliff Music Festival Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. I was having a having a look at the lineup the other day, and it looks like there's a lot of very close mates that are going to be performing down there as well. And you know, I've, I've never I've never played it, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. So I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I love festivals. Festivals are like one of my favorite places to play. You know, because there's always a good vibe. People actually like it's like you know a big pool of people that go out to watch. Uh, are there to embrace the music, you know what I mean? So it's, always, it's a good vibe platform to perform your music. With your songs, I was listening to them a bit before, and there's quite a lot of optimism within them. Is that because of your work within the community program? Yeah, it, yeah that would definitely have, have, I mean, that will definitely play a part. It's also, I, I, think, I think what plays a big part is, I think it's an African thing as well, like, from my perspective... <laughs> It's also it's an, it's an African thing. Like you may find find it in other cultures, you know. Like because like where we where we come from, like it's not necessarily you know the richest richest places, but we make do with what we have, and you know we we respect what's around us, and you know we you know we don't we don't even even though it's times get hard and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of like we we look at the things that we have around us, and they make us feel good, and we have faith in tomorrow. If you know what I mean? That's what draws that out of us as well, yeah. And you and As Marino are a duo, but you have DJ Surrender with you. Is that just for this tour? No, for this tour, no. DJ Surrender has been playing with us for about three, four years. But for um, like you know, we uh, we've rejigged up our band, and like you know, so it's myself and As Marino always the front man. Uh, DJ Surrender is on the he's on the cuts, and we've also got a drummer named This One. Which is amazing, and we've got we've got three backup singers. Two of them actually are members of uh, the Massive Hip Hop Choir, right. and um, and the other gentleman is a is a very soulful young, young talented man by the name of Pasca. And you can be found at www.dfrix.com. Dfrix.com. That's D I A F R I X, and we've got links to our Facebook and our Twitter. Follow us on Instagram or all the, all the social medias as well. And your YouTube, you've got some really interesting videos on your YouTube. Definitely, definitely. YouTube is a, uh, our YouTube channel. Where if you check out the last six episodes of, um, you know, like it's gonna lead up to where people can actually, you know, get to know a bit more of what was put behind this, um, the making of Pocket Full of Dreams, and also just get to know us, myself and Azarino, a bit better as well, you know. 
Well, I only recently discovered your music and it's you're a very exciting Australian act. I mean, you're just as good as any of the American hip-hop artists. <laughs> so Thank you. Look forward to seeing what you do in the future too because this is only your second album, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. So you've got a long way to go and people can go and see you at the Northcote Social Club or the Queenscliff Music Festival in November. That's right. And it's been great talking to you. Pleasure. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. See Bye-bye. you later.